Shepparton, Utah, the model city that copper built with its copper shingled homes, is the approach to Bingham, famous mining town with its seven mile long canyon street, a narrow lane sprouting frame dwellings. It's the mine headquarters of the Utah Copper Company, for many years the scene of feverish activity. Small cable hauled trams provide an inclined ascent for several hundred feet, permitting us unrestricted vision of this little town. So vast are the mining operations here, it is necessary to board yet another vehicle, this time the caboose of a supply train, to see the world's largest open-cut copper mine. What a spectacle. This man-made wonder, an immense amphitheater-like quarry, terraced with 23 benches or working levels, each 70 feet high. The mine covers an operating area of 475 acres. It is 1,600 feet from the crest to the floor of the pit, which is encircled with miles of railroad track, over which electric engines haul ore cars of 80 and 100 ton capacity. First prospected in 1862 by United States soldiers, it remained dormant until the period of the Spanish-American War, when Colonel Daniel C. Jackling, realizing its great possibilities, made his preliminary efforts to create this awe-inspiring project. Like the fabled ventures of Egyptian pharaohs, this great enterprise, too, depends upon manpower. And more than 4,000 are employed when operating at peak capacity to handle a single day's output of 70,000 tons of low-grade copper ore. Enough mineral in one day to fill 824 cars, equivalent to a train almost five miles long. And that's mining. Terrace and trestle cross and recross this massive mineral basin. Until 1938, more than 266 million cubic yards of material was removed from this enormous mine, a staggering feat, exceeding the total excavations for the Panama Canal by more than 20 million cubic yards. A blasting preliminary is the loading and shooting of spring holes, a prologue to the stupendous multiple explosions. Mechanical moles, electric churn drills, burrow into the earth. A chain of holes, each approximately 23 feet in depth. Fearless powder monkeys nonchalantly pack the small but mighty capsules of ammonium nitrate powder into the apertures. Enough explosive to literally move the earth. And here it goes! What an explosion. Thunder over Utah. 125,000 tons of mineral dust, a veritable smoky curtain of copper. This man-made earthquake is the signal that sends empty ore cars on their way to load up, and it becomes necessary to lay whole sections of new track in order to reach the debris. 29 electric shovels stab the earth, giant steel dippers scooping six to seven tons of rock at a time, completely filling an ore car in the record time of five minutes. Yes, they move mountains here in Utah. And the parade of rock-laden cars starts for the Magna Mill. Part of the blasted material is capping or waste, but this too is utilized, being dumped so that water may flow through it, and in this manner capture certain chemical qualities with the power to transform tin can shavings into almost pure copper precipitate. In reality, these shavings are scrap iron, gathered in bales like hay. And pitched in 
into a lengthy trough. Becoming saturated with the copper charged water, the waste iron is magically converted into copper. Troughs, technically called launders, deposit the solution in huge settling tanks, extending the length of the plant. At this stage, the precipitate is 89% copper and is ready to be transported to the smelter for the fiery baptism which will convert it into solid metal. We leave the precipitate and follow the ore to Magna Mill, where we witness an amazing operation. A carload of rock turned upside down like a toy in a powerful rotary dumper. Sharing our fascination is Colonel Daniel C. Jackson, active head of this stupendous copper enterprise. Tons of rock are catapulted into the crusher looking for all the world like a huge coffee grinder, creating an ear-splitting roar. Conveyor belts carry the grist from crusher to crusher, each chewing the ore a little finer until mechanical classifiers divert any remaining coarse bits to the battery of ball mills. Pulverized to a fine consistency, the ore is mixed with reagents, becomes a pulp-like mixture, and is delivered to the flotation machines where the copper mineral is floated away from the worthless gang or rock and recovered as copper concentrate and then made ready for delivery to the smelter. Here, gold, strangely enough, is a byproduct of copper, being caught in valuable quantities in these launders through which the mill tailings flow. Efficient mining and smelting of low-grade ore makes for continuous activity at the massive Garfield smelter, where more copper mat is produced than at any other place in the world. From one steel volcano to another, the fiery copper lava is drawn, rejecting all waste material or slag. The slag is skimmed off. It is poured into special metal dump cars. Then it is rushed to the slag pile, where it cascades down the side of an ever-increasing mountain of waste. Purged and purified, the stream of molten copper is molded into 450-pound blocks cooling streams of water playing on the hissing, steaming oblongs. And thus, copper is born, born to serve mankind. Slender strands, metal arteries loaded with the lifeblood of industry, electric power. Hemispheres are linked. A world speaks. That's copper. Bingham Canyon has been in operation since 1903. And in the more than 100 years since then, this site has been the source of many breakthroughs still used in mines throughout the world today. Here at Bingham Canyon, we have much to be proud of. Mining is a surprisingly complicated activity. At first glance, it may look simple, but it's taken decades in advanced planning to get to the point where we are. It starts with exploration and resource drilling, defining a valuable reserve. Then we move on to mine planning, developing the infrastructure and the plans that will lead to the economic extraction of metal. Once we're in mining operations, it's about drill and blast, load and haul, dumping, and crush convey. As you will see, mining requires a great deal of support. Nothing would happen without the asset management teams, haul road maintenance, dust control, 
and many other activities that support mining every day.